and uh, we had a couple of uh, technical problems which we're working on right now. So we trust that we'll get them all working right. Right. But we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, just as we've been doing all week. Our free gift this week is the Holy Spirit's a genius. If you'll listen to him, he'll make you look smart. And this book talks about the person, the function, the work of the Holy Spirit and the indwelling Holy Spirit. So you get this book. We've given away a bunch of them already. All you have to do is go to markhankins.org, go to our website, click on the free book on the Holy Spirit. Our office will send it to you just as soon as possible. Or you can just call our office, 318-767-2001, and uh, our staff will send you the book. And if you're from another country watching, then we'll send you the PDF version of this book. The Holy Spirit is a genius. So we want to get it to you as, as uh, quickly as possible. So just get on the website and wow, what a, it's not really a very big book, but it is loaded. It's like dynamite. With the revelation. not too big, but it's On the Holy Spirit. Very so <laughs> you just get a hold of this and read it, underline your favorite parts, because I have some favorite parts on this book. And so uh, get Like this. the whole book. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's not real big. We didn't put a lot of just un unnecessary information in there yeah. and so it's a lot of great things on the holy spirit so get the book and it's free to you and we thank you for being a partner with us you can be a send a one-time gift as a partner or you can be a monthly partner many who have many monthly partners have some that are give every week and we thank you our partners for your generosity for your giving and you help us distribute the word around the world and right now we're working on trina's book on healing uh, how to take the word yeah. like medicine, healing, and in Vietnam. So in Vietnamese, that book is almost ready, and uh, they're getting ready to put the put, put the cover, the, on, put it the cover on it, right, Darcy? Ready. So they're getting ready to put the cover on it and getting ready to print it, and then we'll distribute it free in Vietnam. That's what our partners do. So I encourage you to be a partner, and thank you for supporting of the gospel as it goes around the world. And so today we're studying on the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. So if you have your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, and we're going to talk again about what happened on the day of Pentecost. It changed everything. It changed the church was born. everything. And it exploded. <laughs> yeah, we wow. know. Jesus. We know that Jesus wow. said you will receive power. Uh, power, I love what one translation is, power, it says, of the kind which God has mm -hmm. and exerts, or the God kind of power. He said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So uh, on the day of Pentecost is when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what happened on the day of Pentecost, we've looked at this the last couple of days. It says they were all filled. So there was 120 there, and all of them got filled, including uh, Peter was there, and he got empowered by the Holy Spirit, and that changed his life forever. And then uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was there, mm -hmm. and she was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it says that fire set upon their heads, and the wind of the Spirit of God, as the presence of God, the glory of God filled the place where they were sitting. So they're all sitting there, they're there yeah. seeking and waiting to receive this mm -hmm. power, or you will be endued with power from on high. And so they're, they're expecting this kind of power. And so Jesus had instructed them, don't go anywhere until you go and receive and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, it filled the room where they were, but it also filled each one of them. Mm -hmm. So we know the Holy Spirit can fill a place, Yeah, but he wants to come on the inside and fill, and people. fill people. Now, we used to, in the Old Testament, God dwelled in a tent or in a temple. Mm -hmm. That's where his presence dwelled. But now we mm -hmm. are the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 yeah. Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 6, it says both chapters, yeah. we are, your body is the temple of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Holy Ghost is on the inside. In this new covenant, yes. because of the blood of Jesus, then now the Spirit of God lives in us, dwells mm -hmm. in us, mm -hmm. and though he lives in us, that's how we know that we're saved, he bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, but also we can be filled or be more yielded mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. and uh, respond to him. And so to be filled with the spirit, I like what uh, Smith Wigglesworth said, in case you see my, my raggedy book <laughs> up here on the front, this is, <laughs> this is my book, Ever Increasing Faith. 
Mark, you've Smith worn out how many cups? And I've worn out a bunch of them, and this is my last one I'm wearing out here. So uh, I don't have to start on another because i got my notes in here. And so this book, Ever-Increasing Faith by Smith Wigglesworth, actually has two main uh, subjects in this book. One is being full of faith, mm-hmm. and the other one is being full of the Holy Spirit, being mm-hmm. full of faith and being full of the Holy Spirit. So Smith Wigglesworth said it this way. He said, we are commanded by God to be filled with the Spirit, probably referring to Ephesians 5.18. We're commanded by God. So this would be one of the new covenant commandments. That would make a good little book, wouldn't it? New covenant commandments. We're commanded to walk in love. We're commanded to be filled with the Spirit. And so he says, we're commanded by God to be filled with, with the Spirit. And that, that uh, oh, scripture means to be filled and filled again. So he said, we're commanded by God to be filled with the Spirit. And he said, and the measure you fail of this, you're that far short of the plan of God for your life and the power of God for your life. So he says, we're commanded by God. He said, being filled with the Spirit is not just a luxury. It is a divine command that we cannot meet the conditions of this day without being filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's what he says in this little book here. I've got several quotes from Smith Wigglesworth there in the book. And he said this, he said, you must be prepared for certain extravagances (laughs) when people are filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, just think about it. You have God in you. That's going to make something happen in your body. Yeah, and so they <laughs> your emotions are going to go up. Ah! Well, they had fire on their head on the day of Pentecost, and they right. all were filled. They started speaking in a supernatural language, right. but also they started acting like they were drunk or intoxicated because uh-huh. Peter stood up and said, These are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. He he said, your sons and your daughters, your old and the young. He said, the rich and the poor. He said, there'll be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last days. And that's the day we're living in. And I expect that outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life, in your family, and in your church or in your ministry. And today we declare that outpouring is happening in our yeah. lives. Yes, it is. To be filled and filled again. And each time we talked about yesterday, Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 19, there is examples and accounts of them being filled with the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit, just as that, as they were in the beginning with the evidence of speaking in tongues, maybe not in that <laughs> certain instance, but later. Yeah. And uh, we know that Paul, we talked about Paul being filled with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, he said, I speak with tongues more than you all. Yeah. He so said, he oh, really, uh, when there is a filling, then there is, has to be a demonstration that something happened on the inside. Even back in the Old Testament, we're talking about the temple, our body mm-hmm. being filled. Well, the temples in the Old Testament were filled with the Holy Spirit when certain things happened. And that was after the sacrifices were made, the blood was poured out. And then, you know, that that causes that place to be sanctified and made mm-hmm. holy it's a, it's a special place dedicated for God. Well, it says the glory, mm-hmm. the glory of God filled, filled the temple, filled the house. God said, when the glory filled the house, he said the priest could not stand yes. up. And, and so the, wow. the, the power of God, the glory of God, even when Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, it says that the soldiers could not stand up. They fell over they like fell. dead men. So that happened in the Old Testament. They all fell. Hallelujah. The power of God yeah. is the glory. One of the words for glory is heavy. Yeah. The and meanings. So there are some of these phenomenons of what you would call the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, that they're spiritual demonstrations and physical demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so in the Old Testament, the hand of God, which the Spirit of God, came on the prophet, and he took off running. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I think sometimes that's why people like, like what's happening? My mama used to kind of take off running. And so that was a demonstration yep. that he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. What, the last three and a half years? And now the next three and a half years, well, there'll be, the things will change. The atmosphere will change. 
So while he's running, it started raining. And so David, when he was experiencing the glory, that says that David, the king, danced with all of his might. He mind. danced, yes. And there was great joy. He and brought so they, the glory into the city. He ushered the glory. Into the kingdom. Yeah. And so <laughs> what happened here on the day of Pentecost, they were, they were so full of joy and so filled with the Spirit and the fire of God and such joy. I mean, that's throughout the book of Acts, the joy that they had. Acts 13, 52 says they were filled yep. with joy and with the Holy Ghost. I like to say you cannot get a sad Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, one thing about when the Holy Spirit comes, he makes you want to sing. You know, yeah. you're going to have happy songs. You're going to have worshipful songs. And there's something about that song that comes out. Mm -hmm. It's so pleasing to God. It's a spiritual yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. And it's like in the Old Testament, David did those in the, it was a sacrifice of praise. Moses mm. did that. Um, yes. Yeah. And Miriam. Mm -hmm. And here, when they brought the, you refer, referenced uh, when they brought the um, Ark of the Covenant mm -hmm. and they established worship yeah. in the temple, Solomon's temple. Yeah. Wow, that's what they did. When they had it they loud. They began to sing. Praise and they all, loud. they had instruments. This is Second Chronicles 5.13, when the trumpeters, and singers were joined in unison, mm -hmm. making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord when they lifted up their voices mm -hmm. with the trumpets wow. and cymbals and other instruments for song and praise the Lord, saying, He's good, His mercy endures forever. Then the house of the Lord was filled, filled. with a cloud so yeah. that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory wow. of the Lord filled the house of that, God. And that's the old covenant. Yeah. And we have a better, a better covenant. And so God's not just filling the house. Now he fills <laughs> us. And I think there is like a saturation point yeah. when we're filled. And so uh, Jesus said, come and drink. And I said, yesterday, you can't drink with your mouth shut. So in <laughs> Ephesians 5, when he said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. The yes. next verse says, speaking, speaking. to yourself yes. in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So when you open your mouth on the day of Pentecost, they began to speak and they uh, were speaking a unknown language, mm -hmm. but you'll see later on that they were filled. Not only did they speak in, un in other tongues, an unknown language, but they also prophesied and gave a known utterance, right. inspired utterance. Right. And then there's also a demonstration where they got and they acted intoxicated. So it said that people came around and started mocking them. So that's what it says in Acts oh 2. It goodness. says they were mocking. Some were just wondering so, in doubt and this, amazed. And there in verse 13, and some of them were, were mocking them. And other translation says they were making jokes about them. They were saying that is ridiculous. So it was public. Yeah. They were not just in the back room. Well, they they got so much stuff happening that they, people started gathering. <laughs> such a demonstration. And uh, so it says people were mocking them. So it's a common thing for natural or unlearned right. or ignorant people to mock the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, in our church one time, we were having a Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost type um, breakout yeah. or move. And so there was a man, a young man in there, probably, I guess he's probably 18 or something like that. And he, I could see him back there and people were being filled with the Spirit. Some people were dancing and some were laughing. And I saw him mocking this young man. And he's mocking. And I thought, oh, that ain't good because he's mocking. And so uh, then I noticed that when he, while he's mocking these people and some mm -hmm. of the stuff appears a little bit funny, but he just kind of was making a big deal mocking him. And so then I saw him start scratching and he's scratching. <laughs> I remember and that. so, so he, uh, he came up to me after and he's like, I can't, I can't stop. Can you pray for me? Pray for me. I, I need to stop. I said, well, if you'll repent for mocking. He broke the, out with Heim. Yeah. I said, if you'll repent for mocking the Holy Spirit or demonstration mm -hmm. of the Spirit, that those hives will leave you. And he said, I repent right now. I repent, God, I repent. I said, I'll pray for you. And the, I left him immediately. <laughs> well, uh, that's better than the Old Testament type of judgment when they were mocking Elijah because he is bald-headed and it said bears came out and ate him. <laughs> I just, he might really have the house. You don't mess with God. So, so, so uh, the mockers wow. were there. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, Paul said, yeah. the natural man does not understand or receive the things of the Spirit of God. He said, because they are what? 
foolishness. So when somebody that lives in the natural and the supernatural, the actually heaven and the glory of God, the spirit of God comes in, there is a physical demonstration. Yeah. And so some people say, well, that's just foolishness. He mm. said, but he said the things of God are spiritually. They are foolish. <laughs> they are spiritually <laughs> discerned, people. but to the natural man, mm -hmm. it looks like they're, that it's ridiculous. So they're mocking. And mm -hmm. so uh, certainly we have times in our church services where there's a teaching time and there's other times when there may be an evangelistic service, but there should be some meetings that are just what we would call believers meetings or what you call Holy Ghost meetings. Yeah, and Paul and talked about it, that in Corinthians. Yes, he did. He covered that in 1 Corinthians 14. How should these kind of meetings be conducted? Yeah. You know, there should be order. But it's Holy Ghost order. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it's, a cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of order in a cemetery. Well, we're talking about the demonstration and the work and the move of the Holy Spirit. And so the, the purpose of this new language of praying in other tongues and the purpose of this kind of joy where people may laugh or people may dance or the purpose of the glory where people may, the anointing be so strong that their body can't contain it and they will be what we call slain in the spirit or they will fall out. Mm -hmm. And I've even had mockers, you know, you probably remember years ago I was preaching and uh, there was a guy kind of uh, mocking because uh, we were laying hands on people and some people are getting filled with the spirit. Some people were rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he was really just sitting there just kind of mocking. And he's a big, strong guy. I think he's probably 30 or 35 years old. And so, um, while, while that was going on, he was sitting right there at the, uh, at there and he came, uh, well, I don't forget what happened. He stood up or something. Anyway, I said, come up here, brother. So he came up here. Oh, yeah. I sir. laid hands on him and you would have thought I hit him in the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> it knocked him back at least six feet from where I was <laughs> and it knocked him flat on the floor and the power of God hit him so hard. Wow. He'll never doubt the, 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 the reality, reality of the power yeah. of God. And so he knocked him back six feet while he was laying there, though. I went over there and prayed for him. And then everybody got so full of joy. And, uh, and, uh, he said something like this. He said, well, uh, I don't, I don't know why somebody's laughing. He said, cause that sure ain't funny. In other <laughs> words, the power of God hit him and knocked him for a loop. It's well, we weren't real. laughing at him, but there is a joy in the Holy Ghost yes. and the power of God is real. And there's, tremendous power available to the believer. But you can see in the demonstration of the Spirit, there would Just be mockers about, or people that think it's ridiculous. This is the power of God. There's no greater power. Yeah. So if you, uh, maybe you're messing around with electricity mm -hmm. and you get a little shock, man, that'll make you act crazy. <laughs> you know, you just start shaking or something. <laughs> or you grab a hold of a live wire, you could die. I mean, because you came in touch with power. Yeah. How much more the power of God? We need to see it in this generation. Yeah. yeah. And uh, people and will you know. cannot see it in this generation without without being filled yeah. with welcoming the Holy Spirit in all of His facets. In other words, the Holy Spirit, not just uh, the way people want the Holy Spirit to act. But to yield to the Holy Spirit, there would be a demonstration. Mm -hmm. And so Dad Hagen said many of the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit are joy demonstrations. Joy. That's why you'd have somebody getting full of joy, maybe laughing. And uh, you might have somebody dancing yeah. like David danced. You might have somebody running uh, like <laughs> Elijah took off running. In other words, they're demonstrations of great joy. And I've seen people be, become what you would call under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And they would dance or some people would be like intoxicated, which what happened on the day of Pentecost. Uh -huh. They literally were drunk in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> They had to get a designated driver after church. <laughs> <laughs> you just think about when, when you have an encounter with the power of God. You know, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and he'll bring a demonstration. The Amplified Bible says in John 16 and verse 8 that he will bring a demonstration. Mm. What is a demonstration? It's very clear uh Example, you can see it cannot be denied about three things about sin, yeah. righteousness, and judgment to come. But no, it's about, and the judgment that was on Jesus for our sins. 
So the Holy Spirit will will reveal mm -hmm. that you are the righteousness of God because Jesus became sin for us and yeah. took our judgment. And so, if we and just, you know what? That makes you feel free. <laughs> yeah, freedom. and that's why you want to run or jump or shout. That's a demonstration mm -hmm. of somebody that has just been set free from bondage or from a prison yeah. uh, of, of fear or torment. And the anointing destroys that yoke and sets them free. You really cannot even enjoy life when you have those kind of things harassing your yeah. mind no, you and, and harassing your life and tormenting you. But the moment the revelation of Christ and what God has done for us in Christ through the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit takes what Christ has done for us and makes it a reality in us. Now, Mark, uh, where is that, that? I think it was Paul said, I preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost. Where is that? That is in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Peter. When Peter said, we preach the gospel, it's in uh, okay. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse uh, 12, I think. First so the Peter gospel one. We and preach the, the gospel with the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost is connected. Ah, let me find. Make so, sure. All Acts. right. So we're we're having a Bible study here. So so in Acts ten forty four it says while Peter he said while we while Peter he said while we yet spake these words while I spake these words he said the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So in First Peter chapter one in verse twelve. He talks about the sufferings of Christ, the glory that should follow in verse 11. But in verse 12, he says, we preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Mm. <laughs> and Peter, he's talking about joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yeah. And so he's talking about joy, full of glory. And he's talking about the glory that should follow after the death and resurrection of Christ. And then he says, and we preach the gospel with the Holy Ghost. And that's what he did in the book of Acts when uh, Cornelius had invited him to come mm -hmm. to his house. He had all his family in there. He was hungry for God. You know, that's, that's when the Holy Spirit comes. When anybody is hungry for God. Yeah. Just simple. I'm hungry for God. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit will show up. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit arranged such a divine encounter. Mm. Peter wow. came and Cornelius had mm. angels were involved in this setting up of this supernatural meeting because the Holy Spirit was going to be poured out not only on the Jewish people, mm. but on the Gentiles. Yeah. That means the whole world. Mm. And so... Um, so while Peter Something was happening, Peter was preaching. What was he Acts preaching? Acts 10, 44. Well, it tells you a sermon. And he centers his message on that Jesus died. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. Yeah. He's preaching the gospel. Yeah. And it said, while he yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. So the Lord told me one time, he said, if the Holy Ghost never falls while you're preaching, he just don't like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be that the people that you're preaching to are not hungry. Right. And so there is a, a desire for the gifts of the Spirit, but there's also the accuracy of preaching that gospel. And while Peter spake these words, he's preaching with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and angels must have come. Mm. The angels had been there before he one, went to Carnesia. One house. verse in that, that message that he was preaching is so outstanding. It's, it, it's uh, verse 38. Mm -hmm. How God anointed yeah. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. who went about doing yeah. good and healing all, casting oh. out devils. Healing all the oppressed of the devil. Rest of the devil. Yeah. And so he's talking really about the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. And so... Well, he's talking about Jesus, and he's talking about the anointing of the Holy mm. Spirit on Jesus. Mm. Then that same Holy Spirit empowered and filled Peter on the day of Pentecost, and now Carnelius, his whole family. In other words, you'd rather have your whole family filled with the Holy Spirit than anything else in this world. And so, so Carnelius gathered his whole family, and Peter preached the gospel to them. That's why as a father and you as a mother, when our children were little, we made them sit up close and we watched them to see, make sure they heard the gospel and make sure they got filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, and I'm also not ashamed of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. There is a purpose for that infilling and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And on that day in Acts 10, 
the Holy Spirit fell on the whole household. Yeah. So not only Cornelius, but as a father, Cornelius commanded all of his family. He was in charge. Mm, they were all. <laughs> he said, everybody get in here. And this is our purpose. This is something we're having in our house. And all of them were born again, filled with the Holy Praise Spirit. Praise the Lord. And, you know, I remember as a, as a young girl, the uh, Beerman household, dad, Beerman, Bill, and Ginger, you know, that's my mom, dad. And my growing up years, they had experienced the power of the Holy mm. Spirit. They had experienced the new birth. And they invited that into the home. They didn't mm. keep it in the background. They put it right mm. out here. We're going to have family devotions. Yeah. We're all gathering around the living yeah. room at the table. And we would uh, read the scriptures together. Yeah. But not only that, we would mm. pray, not only pray in English, but we would pray in the Holy Ghost. And we had demonstrations of yeah. the power of God in our living room. Yeah. And I think that's what really gripped my heart yeah. forever. I know this mm. is real. And, uh, and, and our ooh. family, my mom and dad, yes. and we had a demonstration of the Holy Spirit in the church uh, periodically. And uh, I've talked about it before, how that people yes, would start have. to praise. And <laughs> some people would pray in this unknown tongue. Yeah. And I couldn't understand what was going on. And then my mother would get full of joy and she would shout and she would run. And then great freedom would break out. And Sidney <laughs> Smith, he would, he would start to dance. And then Sister Houston was the richest woman in town. And she'd get filled with the Holy Ghost and laugh and get intoxicated. And so, so it was all kinds of people. Yeah, it wasn't such, just the and ignorant I, yeah, and, and the poor. And people were not trying to draw, <laughs> attract attention to themselves. Right. You could tell they had just been set free and they could not contain it. Right. And so in this demonstration of the Spirit, we watched our own children at early ages to see if they had experienced the infilling and the power of the Holy Spirit. We watched them. We made sure we positioned them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now both of them are serving the Lord. Both of the, our son and our daughter are preaching and both of them filled with the Holy Ghost. And so great leaders. So one of the greatest tests of leadership for a pastor or for a preacher or for any believer, for any father, father any mom and dad, yeah. The greatest test of leadership is to have your own children following Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, full of joy, serving the Lord. I know they won't be perfect, but I guarantee you, <laughs> if you make sure they get filled with the Holy Ghost, what a tremendous advantage to following Jesus you know, is, to, is, is to lead your children, lead your children. into this experience yes. of the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, in the world, there's a thought, there's a, a trend, you know, I'm just going to let my children decide when they get big, what they want to do, what church they want to go. That is ignorance, ignorance, <laughs> stupidity, dumb, foolish. Well, the, <laughs> How can I the, give any more words? Listen, do you teach your kids that they should wash their hands? Do you teach your kids, you know? You teach them to go to school. Go to school. You even make them go to school. Make, you eat these foods. They're good for you. But receiving Jesus as your Savior as a child, mm. being baptized in the Holy Spirit as a child, opening the Word of wow. God and teaching your mm. kids a word, it will keep them on a, on a good path yeah. of safety. Yeah. They'll develop good uh, habits. When they're young. They'll be intelligent, and they'll choose the right friends, and they'll go the right direction mm -hmm. their whole life. You don't wait till they get up. Yeah. You start when they're tiny and Well, tender. there comes a time when they leave the house That's, that you yeah. don't have that kind of influence. But as long as they're in your house and you start when they're you're young to train your children. God's not going to train your children for you. He gave them to you. He told you That's to right. train them. And so we train them in prayer. We train them in the Holy Ghost. We train them in faith. And so that means when they get old, they will not depart. And so we train our children. So I encourage you, while your children are, are young and they're still at the house, don't just keep doing things everybody else does and watching TV and doing all those things and trying to make them entertained and try to make them feel like you're successful and go to the mall and buy them all the tennis shoes and stuff. You sit them down and you teach them the word and you lay hands on them yeah. until they're filled with the Holy Ghost and do that regularly. That's the greatest test of leadership for any man or any woman is to lead your children 
And you only have a certain period of time that you have to do that. Mm -hmm. And some of you, your children may already be grown and gone. And so all you can do now is pray for them, plead the blood of Jesus over them. Yeah. But while they're in your house, if you will train them and see that they are filled with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and, and let them know where your blessing came from mm -hmm. and they will not ridicule the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They'll understand, even though it may look silly or funny to the natural man, yet the spiritual person yeah, knows when there's a demonstration of the Holy Spirit going on. And so amazing things happen when the Holy Spirit fills us and a demonstration means something from the unseen now is being demonstrated in the scene. It's amazing. You know, I think about, of course, as a mom or grandma, you always think about your children, grandchildren. I mean, we have pictures, we have yeah. Facebook, we have Instagram, everything. These are my grandkids. <laughs> Uh, but the most important thing, you know, that I think about is for them to be tender and to hear and follow God for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think about at in the evening times before they lay their head down, go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So important. Just like you would close the door of your house and lock it. Well, you want the last thing that your children have in their thoughts before they close their eyes. Wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we have family devotions? Yeah. At nighttime. Instead of video game. Yeah, or a movie or something. I mean, really, just think about the Holy Spirit, inviting the Holy Spirit to into our us. homes yeah. and opening the Word and worshiping, singing, mm. worshiping God. It doesn't have to be long. But for your children to go to sleep without an atmosphere, oh, such peace. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us kind of like Samuel he went to sleep there at the temple mm -hmm. as a little boy. Yeah. And he heard and he learned to recognize mm -hmm. the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, speaking. and, and you know, my, my dad, um, um, your dad was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was in the army, I think. He got saved right. and filled with the Holy Spirit. My dad, my grandpa, my dad's dad yeah. was, a, was a preacher and he got filled with the Holy Spirit in midlife. But my dad, they were having a prayer meeting at at the house and my dad would tell the story that my grandma and the women were praying and the Holy Spirit fell in the house. And then my dad got filled with the Holy Spirit at eight years old. He said he is in the other room playing. He got filled with the Holy Ghost and started praying in other tongues. He said he prayed in other tongues and made such a racket that the women stopped their prayer meeting, went over and saw my dad, eight years old, praying in other tongues. And he said he prayed in other tongues for two hours at eight years old. He, he said, got and, on fire. And he said, and I knew I was called to preach at eight years at old. Eight. eight years old. I mean, and when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll know what the will of God is for your life. Yes. When you get filled, you can follow and be led by the sure. Spirit. But imagine if we would get our children filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not only saying, Jesus is my Lord and I know that I'm saved, but to get them filled with the Holy Ghost at six years old, eight years old, ten years old. Yeah. We are not ashamed and not embarrassed no. about the demonstration. And I've seen children filled with the Holy Spirit. Not only did they speak in a supernatural language, but they got so full of joy. <laughs> There's nothing like it in this world. And so our children, when they were little, they have seen you and me praying in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. singing in the yeah. Spirit in our home and at church. And they've also seen us uh, rejoice, maybe even dance or run around the church. We didn't do that every Sunday, but there were times that our kids would see their parents acting that way. And now they way. do it. <laughs> Your kids need to see you well, uh, fill with the Holy Ghost. That Peter, on the day of Pentecost, he quoted by inspiration of the Holy Spirit from Joel yeah. 2. And he quoted, he says, in, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons mm. and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Wow. On your servants and handmaidens will I pour out my spirit. So, uh, Wow. Wow. That, that's from the beginning. It's the whole family. Yeah. No matter our age, the Holy Spirit, mm. He will dwell wow. in the age level. 
Praise God. And so it one, engendered. One translation says divinely granted appearances. Wow. So that means your sons and your daughters prophesying, praying in an unknown tongue, but also inspired utterance, praying in the spirit, but also dreams and visions and yes. visitations yes. of the spirit of God and the, and the realm of God and angels and ministering spirits. Mm -hmm. And so the unseen is what we live in. We live in it. I remember you told a story <laughs> as a little boy, you had a, a terrible dream and it was hell, I think. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. I, was, um, I don't remember how old I was, maybe 10 or something. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night, I had a dream and I dreamed that I was going to hell. So I woke up in the middle of the night. I went and woke my parents up and said, I need to get saved. <laughs> I don't remember how old I was, but it's very clear to me that just because my parents were saved didn't mean I was saved. Yeah. And I had to go to my parents and said, y'all pray with me. I want to be saved. So it's the middle of the night. I might have been eight years old. I can't remember. And so I got saved then, but it was years later before I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's very important that we are not only saved and lead our children to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And at 17 years old, when I was filled with the Holy Ghost, wow, it was just a life changer. How did that happen? Uh, I had, um, uh, I'd had a lot of people pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of funny stories about that. I had a lot of people pray for me. I tell people I've been baptized many different ways, many times. Like people okay. say, so like you, people say people you need to be praying. baptized in the <laughs> Trinity, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, be baptized in the Jesus name of Jesus. Name you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. So they baptized me every formula possible. So then they actually <laughs> held me underwater for a while to see if that would work. <laughs> well, what made the difference that time when you were 17? <laughs> when I was 17, I think I realized that I, uh, this was necessary. I needed the Holy Spirit. Now, I was saved, so the Holy Spirit did bear witness with my spirit, so yeah. I knew I was a child of God. He lived in you. But I needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I went to a meeting, and there was a young person teaching, and they were teaching on 10 steps to being filled with the Holy Spirit. So I got those 10 steps. It's from Dad Hagen's book. So I what think. are some of those steps? And first step is go through the scriptures because that's where faith comes from. Mm -hmm. Go through the scriptures of everyone that was filled and then go through the scriptures on the purpose of praying in the spirit in other tongue. Study those scriptures. That's where faith comes from. Mm -hmm. So I just went through the word until I could see and then what was happening. You found that you needed to ask. Yeah. And then you ask and say, Father God, I thank you. I know that I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I know that I'm safe, mm -hmm. but I'm asking you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. It's very interesting that even after you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ephesians 3 prayer right. in verse 14 through 20, even after you're filled <laughs> with the Spirit. So it's not a one-time event. Yeah. And so Ephesians three fourteen is right. Father God, I'm asking you that you would grant me according to the riches of your glory to be strengthened with mighty power by your spirit in my inner man, that Christ would dwell in my heart by faith, that I being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length and the depth and the breadth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that I might be filled. filled. There it is again. That I might be filled. There you got filled in Ephesians 3. You got filled in Ephesians 5.18, which means that Christianity cannot work right if you're not filled. Boy, is that the truth. And so a lot of times people say, well, I, you know, I've tried everything. Well, have you ever tried this? <laughs> be you got to be spirit. filled with the Spirit yeah. of God. And so be filled and God. stay filled, which is a continuous thing, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God in Ephesians 3. And then he says that now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask a thing according to his power that works in us. So he says when you're filled, yielded to the Holy Spirit, God now is able to do things beyond what you can even ask or think. So, He's not quoting Ephesians 3.20 apart from 19, 18, 17, 16. <laughs> right? And so he says, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, currently filled with the filled, Holy Spirit, God now busts through the, every barrier of your thought life what you can ask or think. You, he'll do things you hadn't even thought about and you never even asked for. You keep on saying this word, ask. It's three letters, ask. But it's a huge word. And it reminds me of Luke 11 in verse 13. Jesus was talking. And he was talking about prayer, asking and receiving. In verse 13, 
He says, if you then, being evil as you are, know how to give mm. good gifts yeah. to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, and he said, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. And wow. so asking God, so that was, I want yeah. this acts experience. You receive not because you ask not. I so ask. ask. I don't just want ask. I don't want to just be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit the same way they were filled in the book of Acts Amen. and the same way they were filled in the New Testament. In other words, I'm not going to come up with a new definition of being filled. I want to be filled as they were filled. And when we ask, we Mark 11, 24, we believe we receive it. Yeah. And if you receive something, like if you ask for this book and I gave it to you, you would say, so, I hope you would say thank you. Yeah. And so just thank the Lord. Thank you. You gave me this experience. You gave me this outpouring of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, just like in the book of Acts. Yeah. And, and so, then something So that's happens. what we did next, is we prayed and we asked. In other words, expect. We know the word, so we know it's the will of God yep. to, for us to receive. So pray and ask. And then he said that after we pray and ask, then he said, just start to thank God. Because mm -hmm. we ask according to his word, so we know we have. So we received, so we just started thanking God out loud in English. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And praise God. And so we started thanking God. And then we said, okay, now stop talking in English. Because something's happening. John because 7. you cannot talk in English <laughs> and right. another language at the same time. So, so I he said, now stop talking in English. Open your mouth. Why do you say open your mouth? Because it says in Psalms and in the book of Job, they opened their mouth wide for the latter rain. That's the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Our God said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. So I opened my mouth. For you can't speak in English with your mouth shut and you can't speak in tongues with your mouth shut. So I just opened my mouth wide. And then he said, now out of your belly. John said, Come on from up on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. uh, different sounds or syllables or utterance will come out and you speak those out. In other words, the Holy Spirit does not speak in other tongues. He gives you the utterance, but you're the one that speaks. Amen. It's your voice, your tongue. So when he gives you unction or utterance, yield to the Holy Ghost and by an act of faith, step out and speak those sounds or syllables. So use your own voice. No matter what it sounds like. I mean, it could sound like a language in the earth, or it could sound like a language you've never heard before. Right. And so I just did what he said, and I started thanking God. I stopped talking. He's opened my mouth, and I said, if I fully expect and any sound or syllable, I yield to the Holy Ghost. I'll speak. And so I, I just started speaking out those different sounds, and I started speaking out. And Paul said, you're speaking, your spirit is praying, and you're speaking divine secrets, and you're talking to God. My spirit is talking to God. Hallelujah. So you can pray or you can speak with your intellect or you can speak with your spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps you to pray according to the will of God in a supernatural language, praying in another language, wow. a supernatural language. And from a different place. And from your spirit, yes. not just your intellect. Mm -hmm. So I just... When I started praying in other tongues, I was actually, we were, uh, we were standing there, a few people, and I started praying in other tongues. I was 17, and I'd tried so hard for years, and I did not know that to yield to the Holy Spirit and that by faith to cooperate and to speak those sounds, so I started speaking out, and I heard myself, and I'm like, <laughs> wow, this, but I could tell it was a different part of me praying. Yeah. It was not my mind. Yeah. It was not my intellect, it was not my feelings, but my spirit, deep on the inside of me, my spirit, the real me, was praying. And I heard myself speaking in other tongues, and I thought, wow, that's amazing, because it was a different part of me praying, but also, not just my spirit was praying, but I realized it was easy. And I realized I could have done that 10 years ago. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Why? Well, because I didn't understand how to receive. Mm -hmm. And when you're filled with the Spirit, you don't get a different Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit you got when you got saved. Right. You're washed in the blood. And the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. Jesus is your Lord. Now you're saved. So the Holy Spirit's in you. 
This is just a new dimension, a deeper dimension, and an infilling or yieldedness to the Holy Ghost. So I started praying in other tongues. So listen close. Speaking in other tongues is not just the initial evidence, mm -hmm. the initial physical evidence right. of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the continual physical evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's the evidence you are filled and it's the way you are also filled. So when you yield to the Holy Ghost and you're speaking, your spirit is edified and built up until you reach a, a saturation point. Saturation. You feel. And that's when some demonstration might happen. And that's happen. when your spirit, <laughs> by the Holy Spirit, yeah. now has greater influence mm. in your life than your brain, your intellect, your feelings, your circumstances. That's the Holy Spirit. Wow. There's so, so much we can learn about Him. And still learning. I mean, yes. from 17, which was six, uh, 50 years ago, because I'm 67. So 50 years ago, and I, I could probably tell you... Uh, I wouldn't still be serving the Lord if I hadn't known how to yield to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and to pray in other tongues. Not that I didn't love the Lord, because mm -hmm. I did love Jesus, but I didn't know how to follow him or to surrender or receive from him. Mm -hmm. so the Holy Spirit takes your receiving from God to a whole new dimension yeah. when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so uh, Paul, when he got filled, Acts chapter 9, Ananias laid hands on him. So in my case, I had someone lay hands on me. Okay. So there's three cases where they had hands laid on them and they received. Uh, but there's also cases where Acts chapter 2, the place where they were sitting and the glory of God filled the place and they were all filled. No one laid hands on them in Acts 2. Right. So there's not just one way. There is more than just one, one way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But the main thing is yielding your spirit, mm -hmm. receiving, believing, and receiving, and then cooperating and speaking. And he is in us as believers. Right. But there is this other experience of being filled. He's in us. Let's just say like where the scripture talks right. about, uh, was it Matthew chapter 12, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man. As in Matthew chapter 12, 12, said an unclean spirit went out, uh, and got into this person and was cast out, left, and said, and when the unclean spirit left, it said now the house was what? Empty, empty. swept, mm -hmm. and garnished. So mm -hmm. the devil had left, the demon had left, but the man was what? Uh, swept and garnished. So right. that means he was cleaned, up, uh, cleaned up. He had, uh, he looked better, but it said he was empty. Mm -hmm. And it said, and so that evil spirit came back around and found that house empty, swept, and garnished. And it said, and that evil spirit went back into the man and brought what other evil spirits seven times worse than he was before. Wow. So you can see it's not enough to be cleaned up. You You're going to have up. to be filled up. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't stay filled, he said, the devil come back around and see if you're running on empty. Right, right. And so you got to stay full of the Word, full stay of the Holy full of Ghost. The word. Our many Christians can lose their victory through a counterattack yeah. from the enemy. Yeah. In other words, you whooped him last week or last month, but he'll come back around, try the same thing, same thoughts, same mm -hmm. feelings. The devil don't have any new tricks. Mm -hmm. He just come back around. But if you're full of faith, if you're full of the Word, and you're full of the Holy Ghost, uh, you have a sign that says, no vacancy. No vacancy. <laughs> so, no and vacancy. just go on. Yeah, you stay full. And so stay being filled full. with the Spirit is not uh, just a luxury. It is a divine it, command. It is. It's wonderful. And when you're filled with the Spirit, yeah. yeah, I love what it says in the Old Testament. It says concerning Gideon, it says the Spirit of God came upon him mm. and he was changed into another wow. man. Wow. He's changed. Into another man. So the Holy Spirit changed him into a different kind of you person. You are a different person. Definitely. And others recognize it. You act like a different person yeah. when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're it free. Says, uh, you're a free person. In Judges 7, that's the story about Gideon. And in verse 34, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with himself and yeah. took possession of him. Yeah. And he blew a trumpet. <laughs> yeah, and he, he declared war on the devil, basically. Yeah. 
I see the, that's what's happening in the church. That's the will of God for the hour that we're living in. Mm. You know, taking people, the Holy Spirit is taking people who might be like, oh, I'm nothing like Gideon. I can't do that. I don't have ability. Nobody mm. listen to me. No, you believe the word of God for it yourself. Take his word. It is true. Mm. And then begin to speak and let allow the Holy mm. Spirit yield yeah. to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to fill you and the spirit of, of the Lord will clothe you like in the last book of Luke. Mm. Jesus said, go to the upper room. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will clothe you with yeah. power yeah. from on high and he will take possession of you for God. Mm. And you will blow your trumpet. That means you're going to do the will of God. Do the plan of God for your life. Yeah. In the Old Testament, before Saul became king, mm -hmm. that uh, he was um, hiding. And so the prophet uh, Samuel laid in, uh, pr he prophesied to him. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, and you're going to be the king. Wow. And he said, you're going to meet a company of prophets, and they're going to be yeah. dancing, rejoicing, and prophesying. You're going to get in the middle of them, and the Spirit of God will come upon you. You will prophesy, and you will be changed into another man. <laughs> And so the Spirit of God, when you get among people that are filled with the Holy Ghost and you get in the middle of them, you'll start to prophesy you. and you'll be changed into another person mm -hmm. and God will equip you for His plan and purpose Amen. for your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you, desire, number one, when you know the purpose, then you desire and you yield to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So as we go over the Scriptures all this week, then you go back over these teachings on uh Facebook, <clears throat> Mark Hankins Ministries Facebook. You can find the, the same YouTube, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Instagram, and go over it again and say, I want a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. Then you will live in freedom from bondage of every kind. And then the joy of the Lord will fill your heart. So I encourage you, this is our free book for you, the Holy Spirit, is a genius. If you'll listen to him, he'll make you look smart. So we talk about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, even yeah. the purpose of praying in other tongues in that supernatural language. And so I encourage you to get the book. It's our free gift to you. You can call the office at 318-767-2001. If you're from another country, we're glad that you're watching. We believe the word will be a blessing to you and in your nation, but also there we'll send you the PDF version of this book so you can study on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. So get the book, call the office, and also we want to thank you for being a partner. Even just a one-time gift where you're saying thank you for the word and just thank you for being a partner with us. And as you give one-time gifts, some of you give every month, some of you give every week, we thank you so much for your generosity, for your giving. And God actually said, he'll multiply your seed sown. And so Galatians 6, 6 says, when you and I have received instruction in the word, we've been taught in the word, we are to share all good things with our teacher or where we receive that word from. Because number one, that establishes that word is valuable to you right. when you give. And then number two, I believe it goes from information to revelation. Oh, yeah. And then number three, you're helping somebody else get the same word that changed your life. So become a partner with us. Thank you. All you have to do is go to markhankins.org and say, I want to give something right now. I'm thankful for that word. Or you can text to give the word give and the numbers on the screen. Or you can just write a check, mail it to P.O. Box 12863, Alexander, Louisiana 71315. Or you can call our office and say, I'd like to give an offering right now. I'm so thankful for the word about the Holy Spirit this week. I want to give something. And so we thank you for your generosity. Yes. And God bless you abundantly. So, wow, I can't wait until right now we're working on our new conference center. And so our conference center costs about $1 million. So it's just going to be a big barn. That matches the other two <laughs> barns. God said your barns will be your filled with plenty. Be filled with plenty. <laughs> and so we'll <laughs> just build a big glory plenty. barn, basically. It'll cost about a million dollars. We thank you for giving towards the conference yeah. center. And uh, so uh, we just lack a few hundred thousand, uh, but boy, we've made it great progress. Mm -hmm. So we're over 650,000. Somebody just sent uh, 10,000 yesterday. Lewis and Linda Carson from Thank Michigan, God. from your church, just sent 10,000 
Thank you so much, and God bless you Windows abundantly. Windows of heaven are open Amen. on you. And, yeah, in Sanford, Michigan. <laughs> yes. So God bless you. And all of you that are giving week after week, month after month, thank you. And if you say, well, my, I can't give 10000 I can't even give 1000 Whatever you give, even $10 or $20 goes to help us preaching the gospel and around the world. And uh, so we encourage you just to sow a seed and watch a supernatural harvest, not just financially, but spiritually in your life. And so thank you for your partnership. And also, if you're enjoying this, then share this Bible school. Tell a friend about it. Put it on your Facebook or Instagram. Tell somebody you've got to hear this message on the Holy Spirit. I just It'll keep, change your life. I also keep thinking about this because a pastor recently just said that he took the Spirit of Faith book taught it to his church for several weeks yeah and his whole church was revolutionized it's what he said and i feel the same way the holy spirit is saying you know you could take this if you're a leader your pastor teach us to your wednesday night church or sunday or whatever and see what the holy ghost will do yeah and how he will show up in your church yes so powerful. get the book yep. share it with some friends and uh wow free to you and so god bless you abundantly and we'll rebroadcast tonight at 9 p.m central standard time and so god bless you